know it's problematic, but true. Love my repertoire. Yo, it's your boy right now, DJ Maxter right now, representing Problematic. Coming from Grenada, Nigeria, London. That's where I'm from, you don't know. My profession right now is a specialist soccer DJ. You don't know how the thing's set. Sound System Saturdays UK, yeah? You can catch me London crew, 3 p.m. till 5. And American crew, you can catch me 10 till 12. US crew, don't know, Toronto, big up yourself. New York crew, big up yourself. You've got me locked, you got me on board. Ready and steady. Right now, I'm gonna tell you a little story right now, so make sure you keep it locked and listen to what's going on. You're listening to DJ Max and how I'm gonna be on the rise, yeah? Mad. to be a dancer then dancing started to style out for me and I wasn't really feeling it too much so I just said you know what me and my bedroom started up a new thing and said alright boom let's start DJing I said DJing nah I'm not feeling DJing DJing looks like a lot of work you have to grab all the tunes and all them things then but it was like no it's calm get the tunes and thing and we work together we can mash up a party so I said alright then cool let's start this up Practicing, started practicing and whatnot. Then someone said to me, Oh, I heard you started to be a DJ now. Can you play a house party? I was like, mm, House party, oh, that's kind of a big step. My bedroom was like, Let's go for it. So I was like, All right, let's go for it. We started off a virtual DJ, and once I did virtual DJ, six still did my thing, got a couple of people, a couple of bookings, mash up parties and whatnot. Then I grabbed myself a controller. Put my controller along, started mixing and whatnot. Obviously, it took me a while to get the controller and the, and, and the software together and ready to tear. It was sick. I got my own radio station from, well, not my own radio station, but my own show in a radio station. From there, I pushed myself from there. People started listening to it, started vibes into it. People started supporting it. That's what I like. When people start supporting it, then people start pushing it, and other people start pushing it, and it carries on. That's the way it should be. But the way it is right now, I mean, if you want to do whatever you want to do and you want to be a DJ or you want to do whatever you're doing, you got to do your little mixes, do your house parties and stuff. The best place to do is house parties. From there, once you get bored, do a rave. Once you do a rave, you get to see other DJs do how they do their things. You get to see and you get to realize how you do your stuff. Mix it about, play about. You get to do, you get to flavor up your own mix, your own style. That's the way to do it. Yeah, you don't, you don't copy off other people. Once you copy off other people, people clock you. When people clock you, it, it don't look good. Yeah, it don't look right, it don't, it's not authentic. People say, oh yeah, but you, you offer some other DJ. And you don't want that. See, me now, nobody can ever say that to me because I never feed off of no one. When I do my thing, I do it because I've done it for a long time and nobody fed off me or I never fed off nobody. I do whatever I have to do. In the Queens. Like I said before, it was based on me and another DJ come back, come together, making raves and whatever the case. As much as we made raves and did raves, we attended raves as well. So as we attended raves, people were like, "Oh yeah, you were the DJ that played for my friend's birthday, or you played at that house party in Retete, or when's the next party and this and that and stuff like that." From there, um, people then started asking, "What are you doing?" Uh, my friend wants to come, this and that. Then when you start partying regular with these people, these people start to like, they want to know where you're going or you want to know where they're going and you start to build some kind of, you start to build a friendship and you have like a lot of things in common in regards to like whatever you like, your outgoings. If you like, like for example now, before then when I started doing it, I was under the age to drink so I couldn't really drink. I couldn't really be with people that were drinkers to have something in common. It would be like either the type of music I like, the DJs that are playing, 
or who's actually in the place. If those three clicked, then we clicked. So it was a kind of thing like that. So once I got to an age now, and then drink, I started to get with the drinkers and stuff now, where it was all like, that's in common. So it would be like, rah, let's link up, get a bottle, drink on the way to the party, get waved and have a, and party and have a good time. That's when another element came into it. And then that's how the whole Kings and Queens formed up where people were like, yeah, I want to rave with you. Let's do this together, you're a DJ. At the end of the day, let's come as one, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, cool, I'm good with that. It's even better for me because then if I do anything, at least then I'll have more hands and more people promoting whatever I'm doing instead of just me by myself. Now problematic is the thing about problematic it wasn't it wasn't planned to be a something. It was just it was based on personality. Like I've had now when I'm DJing there's loads of people that are telling me raw the way you mix is, is, is trouble. You, the way you're doing your thing is, is problems. And I'm thinking, well, at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm not really trying to, I'm just trying to make mixes and whatever, but at the end of the day, <laughs> it's soca, isn't it? You can't really, you can't really do a polite soca mix. So, you're doing your mixing and that and whatever. Then one side, like the CDs I've got, I give out the CDs, I get feedback about it. They're like, oh yeah, your problems, your troubles, and all this. Stuff. So I thought, do you know what? Let me make a mix CD called something along the lines of trouble and problems. So I think what happened that day? I must have. What happened that day? Something, something made me. I can't remember. I, I, I must have watched something or heard something. And something made me say problematic, so I was like, okay. No one's used that. No one's made a mix CD. No one's a team called that. No one's an artist called that. And then I thought to myself, is it actually a word? So I had to go and Google that, definitely. So once I found out that was a word, I was like, okay. Saw the meaning of it. Cool. I put that on my mix CD still. I'm going to use that. Then from there, they were like, yeah, you're problematic. You're this and that. So I was like, okay. Sounds like a title I could keep. Instead of calling me King This or Prince That or Mr. This, say, all right then, I'm problematic. Simple as that, just leave it as that. And then from there, um, my family then jumped on it. My family are the ones that I roll out with all the time. If I'm going out anywhere, my family's, I'm always going out with my family. So it's a thing where if I'm a part of it, why can't I be a part of it? They don't have to, they don't, there's nothing they have to personally do. It's just a thing where it's a name, you can even rep it or whatever the case. It's not a tag, it's not a graph, it's not a gang, it's nothing like that. It's just people come together, their man, they're, they're whining and whatnot, I'm doing the mixing and all that. They all apparently all equal to, to problems. So we've taken on that name. And we've used it not in a negative way. So the team there, problematic. I wouldn't say it's a gang or anything like that. It's just a group of people, basically, just doing what they love to do as a group. Whenever I go to a dance and I see like a new DJ lineup and thing, I'm thinking, all right, cool. New DJ, they're doing their thing. Same way when I was new, I did my thing. What I've noticed, certain DJs that are new starting up, they feel when they do their set, their set, the way they mix or whatever they're mixing it with, it's not hype enough. So they start putting sound effects in there and horns and all that stuff. If you're in a rave and stuff like that, people don't come out to hear horns and all that stuff there. They come out to hear the music and the way you're mixing. So if you're going out as a new DJ and you're going to play new music or you're going to play your music, whether it's back in the days, now, new, whatever the case, I, I would never suggest anybody to use horns I think horns is the worst thing for anybody any DJs to do horns sound effects pull-ups anything like that I think all them stuff there for radio when it's like radios or mix CDs or stuff like that because it just sounds it don't sound right in a rave it just sounds it just sounds like you might as well play that music in your yard bro there's no point there's no point coming out to do fresh mix use your talent if you're coming up and you've got talent and you're using your talent and you're just splashing out sound effects all that, it don't make no sense. It just, it's just a big letdown. 
especially if you've got like a good time set as well if you've got a good time set and you're running let's say for example bashment you're running your bashment and stuff if, I, if, if the girls are hearing sound effects and all that because let's be honest the DJs are entertaining the girls if they're hearing that after a while they're gonna be like I'm tired of hearing these sound effects it's getting on my nerves they don't even want to dance no more but I would advise every young DJ definitely 100% not to use no sound effects just work on the mixing um, if you've got a mic man and you work with your mic man work with your mic man let your mic man know how you mix once you lock coordinate correctly and you put yourself in a rave that will definitely boost you up even faster to be honest with you well to be real I think pre-tracking is the worst thing to ever do to ever pre-track go to a dance line up your thing and start playing at what you've pre-tracked what's the point you might as well just put them in a list open up windows media player enhancements crossfader and boom just walk off and do what you're doing there's no point you go in there bring in or if you bring decks or use the decks that's there and mix what you've pre-listed it just doesn't make any sense everywhere you go after that it's just a dead thing it's just a dead thing you just you just it's a waste it's a waste of time it's a waste for you to pre-list and then i know there's some tunes that you you feel raw oh, i haven't played that in time let me put let me put that in the mix and stuff like that that's all good but if you're the pre-listing type that will do the same thing every set for a whole year mate i'm not gonna advise anyone to do it or not to do it because at the end of the day i don't do it i've never done it i've always just opened up my laptop listen to what dj's played before and say right you've played these i'm not gonna play it i'm gonna play what you haven't played i'm gonna go around i'm gonna go around and 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 not not record them things i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna record or, or play or mix or any of them kind of things there it just doesn't make any sense it doesn't make it just that's when the crowd will start losing you start losing the crowd you definitely start losing the crowd doing that so to be honest pre pre-recording pre-listing all them things there no i don't i normally do my fresh live there and then i think every genre of music in the 90s was just on fire 100% every genre every like everything was just the rap was rap was actually rap hip-hop hip-hop you got people on the streets doing their freestyles and whatnot um the dancehall there was no bashment them times it was just dancehall dancehall was dancing tunes that with dance moves like nice dance moves and stuff like that soccer was on point calypso all them things there all of that it would definitely have to be the 90s i'll definitely I'll, if i had to get stuck somewhere it would be in the 90s but i wouldn't want to be that age how i was in the 90s i definitely want to be older than that because i definitely want to hit the clubs and all that i definitely would love to play there in the 90s but if i was to get stuck in definitely in the 90s think about soccer yeah it's a surprise you every year they'll do something completely different now like once every carnival all, all islands carnival's done and they start building up a new one it's completely different it's not even the same as carnival or any ideas for carnival you think you would have next year as a dj listening to the music and waiting on maybe the artists or the islands to produce their their tracks it's all completely different like this year trinidad they went back into their roots with african music they put afro they, well, they called it afro soccer a new genre called afro soccer which is artists, Caribbean artists, which is using African beats and they're using their lyrics in the, in the African beats with the soul, same soca and carnival elements inside it. No one knew that was going to come up, no one had the preview or nothing like that. So, things like that, anything can happen, anything literally can happen. I mean, Grenada's been doing it for years and they still continue to do it. They've been doing stuff like that for years. It's just recently now. The Afro Soca thing has, has come up even higher now because now other islands are now starting to see it, pursue it, and start doing tracks and collaborations. I think collaborations this year now has is even better as well. I think there's some couple artists that are coming up. They're doing good, good collaborations with people that are already they're already there. So collaboration wise, it's getting better. So I think even next year or even a couple years that it'll be even better. So if there's new artists coming up and all stuff like that and they're doing collaborations don't feel that you're not you're not going to progress because you still got years there's still years to come 
loads of collaborations are gonna happen and stuff like that. Loads, loads of big things. Loads of big things are gonna happen. I think definitely for Soulcar. My target, definitely 100% Miami Carnival. I definitely want to be the main, one of the main known DJs in Miami Carnival on the truck doing my thing. I think that would be a high element for me. And if I'm a, a regular annual DJ that's always going up there, then I think I've hit the jackpot. That's my section. I would love to do that. That, Miami, um, Bermuda, Grenada, Trinidad, um, even St. Vincent, I think even, I'm starting to look more into St. Vincent Carnival as well, the Vinci crew, definitely. Barbados, definitely wanna, wanna definitely do that. If I'm all over there, I think that's definitely, definitely for me, I definitely feel I went in on that. Um, UK, I'm already there. I'm already on a mass band. Um, so I'm just building from that, seeing what I need to see, learn what I need to learn and then slowly networking then I'll soon, sooner or later there'll soon be like a message saying boom I'm in this country doing their carnival <laughs> I'm still learning still there's still a couple of places I still want to go my main goal is international that's my main aim I want to definitely be international once I get international, I feel that I've stepped up a level. All these bookings that I'm getting, blessings for all of those and all, the, all sorts and all those kind of things. I'm, I'm grateful for them, but my main aim is international. Once I'm international, I've got a comfortable seat anywhere international, playing what I do and enjoying what I do, then everything's blessed, everything's cool. Party fun, we're up like an elevator. Tell the bartender, bring my drinks now, if I don't... I'm not really a person to have fans, innit? So, I don't really consider people that support me fans, innit? Because... You don't take rocket science. From day one, I already clocked. Like, people come and go with it. Like, you're hot topic for a moment. You do your thing, people go, oh yeah, 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 I like you. What you do, you do, and you mash up, you mash up that dance. That dance, you're hot topic. You're hot topic for whatever you do next. Professional boy. Yeah, that's right. Drink, 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 drink,